Hey everyone, welcome back to Technique Tuesdays here on Self Serving Skillet. I have had some requests to show you how to use a kitchen scale. I was just editing this video and I noticed that the display on the scale isn't really picking up on the camera, so I apologize for that, but that's also not really the point. Try not to let it distract you from the message. This is not going to be a video about trying to steer you away from volumetric measurements. They both have their merit and I'm going to cover measuring spoons and cups next week. A lot of skills are going to be different and you're going to start always by turning it on. There is usually a tear button which just brings it back to zero. So now instead of measuring the cup, I'm measuring whatever I put into the cup. I'm in grams right now, I'm in metric. There's usually a button to change it to freedom units if you want. And I'm not sure if this is common amongst all the scales of the world. Someone in a metric fluent country, please let me know if you have a scale that will bo read both systems. This scale was about $60. I'm going to put a link for it in the description below. When my last scale finally quit on me, which was about $20, now that's 2010 money, I decided to get one that I had worked with in restaurants before and that I had liked. It says right on the front, not legal for trade, so it's not going to be deathly accurate, but it's accurate enough for what I need. I also prefer using this in metric because metric has smaller units, you can get a little bit more precise, and that scares a lot of Americans. I myself was taught metric in school uh, very half-heartedly and promptly forgot it. It's like learning a foreign language with no one to practice with because no one, no one uses it around here. We have two liters of sodas and we have uh, uh, milligrams in our medicine, but that's that's about it. I still have to look stuff up. And if I forget to convert something in one of my videos, thank goodness you're online and it's really easy to look up. You're going to use whatever system you want to use, and I want you to use whatever system you want to use. Just be consistent and know how to use it. The one thing I will say, though, is that Americans use the metric system every single day, and they don't even know it. That right there is broken down into a hundred pieces. I know, hi Curtis, that's a cheap trick. Well, compare this to the old British pound, not the new British pound that's since been decimalized because it makes more sense. An old British pound, one unit, was broken into 20 shillings and 240 pennies. Each penny was further subdivided into two half pence or four farthings. Three pence was a threepence, and six pence was a sixpence or a tanner. Twelve pence was a shilling or a bob, and two shillings was a florin or a two bob bit. Two shillings, six pence was a half a crown, and double that, five shillings, one crown. So after all that, how many crowns in a pound? Right? That's how we look to the rest of the world. But what could get more American than the dollar bill, and I'll let you believe this with your own eyes, I'm in grams here, dollar bill, one gram. Any denomination of American bill, it's one gram. That's my rant. I'm going to show you three methods today of using a scale and I'm going to use the same recipe for all of them. We're just going to make a cup of coffee. Well, we're going to make a coffee drink. We're not going to make a cup of coffee. This scale has a jack for electricity. I usually do leave it plugged in over here on the counter because it's a little bit more accurate that way and I don't have to depend on the battery. This is seriously low voltage and you have the option of turning it off. Your alarm clock takes more power than this. This scale has a plate on top that can be taken off and washed. And then this is the weigh plate. And that goes down into uh, these sensors here. And you never want to put too much pressure on the weigh plate. For instance, if you're portioning something out and you would need to wrap it uh, I would I would weigh it, take it off, and then wrap it. Never put extraneous pressure down on this weigh plate. So the first method I'm going to show you is just to put it on the scale. And that's a good way just to weigh one thing, to weigh dry goods, to weigh something when you don't need to wash your plate in between. But I'm going to take this tray and flip it over, and then I can use it as a little bowl. And this is not a video about coffee, but I'll give you the recipe I'm using anyway. 
The second method then is to put something on and tear, tear the scale. Bring it back to zero. Now, I like this when I'm doing multiple ingredients, when I'm doing wet ingredients, when something is messy, when I'm doing a lot of mise en place, everything kind of gets its own bowl. Say you're putting some raw chicken in this bowl just to weigh it out. By the way, when we're talking about the weight of meats, often you'll go into a restaurant, at least here in the States, and they'll, they'll call it a four ounce chicken breast in a sandwich or in an entree or something like that. They measure it before they cook it, not after. So another thing we can do is take our grinder, tear the grinder, bring it back to zero. Now we can bring it off the scale Put our beans in that I already had measured out from the last time I measured them, and it should come to 15 grams. This is a Porlex hand grinder, and it's on setting number three. It's very fine because this is going to take me about 40 seconds to brew. Hand grinding isn't all that scary. It's a lot less loud than a regular burr grinder, and it probably takes me about 10 cranks to go through a gram of coffee. About 150 times for this, which is really no big deal. What's that viewfinder say? <laughs> 52 seconds. It's not bad at all. We could also just grind it willy-nilly and measure after the fact, or if you have pre-ground coffee, you can use this method. If I tear out the cup, and the top of the air press and I throw in my grounds and I'm gonna go in with the amount of water that I know that I want and I'll tell you how much it weighs. I like to pour a little aggressively it mixes around the grounds that is 203 grams you can probably go with 200 but I like to do it kinda of quickly because you only have 40 seconds now I didn't even start my timer. I'm about 20 seconds in. So you want to stir about 10 times here with the stick they give you. And then I like to create some suction by putting this cup in sideways and pulling up a little bit. When my clock reads 40, in this case 20, I'll just rest on it. There are certain things that I miss when I'm trying to give instruction. I'm going to tear that out and this brings us to our third and final method is building. If I'm doing something like this, I also like to tear a spoon so I know how much the spoon weighs, I can leave the spoon in there. So what I'm making here is a miel or more specifically I'm making sort of a an imitation miel because a miel is a honey cafe latte little cinnamon on top. So what I'm doing to replicate that in a home kitchen is I brewed about two thirds of a cup of very strong coffee to sort of imitate espresso. And I'm gonna go in with some cream. 50, 60 grams seems right. And I'm really going off of color here. And the reason I'm leaving the spoon in is because now it'll drip all over everything. So if my coffee looks right, then I'm going to move on. This method, the spoon method, works really well with sticky ingredients, with viscous ingredients, things that are going to need to melt off of the spoon or when you need to stir things. Peanut butter, this works great with peanut butter. Also, when I'm making a salad dressing, sometimes I'll dip the whisk into my mustard and throw the whole whisk in the bowl see how much mustard I have. We can tear this again if we want, or we can just remember 61. For the sake of simplicity, let's tear it. And I don't like this too terribly sweet, so I'm just gonna fill this spoon up once. See how that's almost come off? So I added not quite a tablespoon of honey. That's probably about two uh, teaspoons of honey. It's all off my spoon, and now we can taste it. And if you're gonna taste it, just remember the the measurement, the weight is going to go down a little bit just because there's less liquid in the glass, but if you really want to measure it out, you'll get a rough idea while having a good idea of what you like in your drink. Could 
could probably use about double that. And we are at 15 exactly. So this is about a tablespoon of honey. Oh, that's what I like. A little cinnamon over the top. Honey and cinnamon. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a really nice frothy top on this. My French press broke. I have done it before where I've made nice frothy milk with a French press. And I'll leave that video right up here. If you want to see me go more into grinders and grind size, I cover that more right over here.